Joining us now, former Democratic New York Congressman Steve Israel, who served in Congress with Governor Walz, and former Senator Claire McCaskill in NBC News and political uh, MSNBC political analyst. Welcome both. So, Steve, you served with Governor Walz. Uh, Nancy Pelosi has already flagged that he was very active in securing better veterans' benefits, as I think a subcommittee chair. He's being portrayed by J.D. Vance as, quote, progressive, whatever that means. He does have the endorsements of both AOC and Joe Manchin. Uh, how do you describe Governor Walz? Well, look, I, I think that uh, the vice president's decision uh, was, was just brilliant and uh, reflects uh, astute judgment, not only for our politics, but for the country. I served with Tim Walz for 10 years uh, in the House of Representatives. And when I chaired the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, Andrea, uh, he, he was at my side. And I'm going to say something about him that you really can't say about most members of Congress. Um, this guy was a no-flash workhorse quietly operational, whether it was pursuing a policy that would uh, protect and defend veterans or, or pursuing a political objective, he just got it done and we could rely on him. The other thing about him that I noticed is, yeah, everybody says he's that rural football coach, high school football coach, and he projects that. But this guy knows how to throw a punch, uh, as you were just talking about uh, with my friend Mitch Landrew. Uh, it was Tim. Uh, it was Tim Walz who figured out how to define uh, the uh, the Trump candidacy uh, in one word, rather than the usual 42-point uh, Democratic talking points. And then the third thing I want to mention that really uh, brought, brought us closer uh, was that this guy knows how to win red-leaning districts. This guy flipped a district that had had two Democrats in it uh, for in, in recent memory. He would advise me at DCCC on what districts could be competitive, how to message in those rural districts, those battleground states. So you put it all together, and I think you have the perfect candidate for vice president and a very good and solid judgment by the, the vice president. So, Claire, what about not doing Pennsylvania? You, no Democrat can win without Pennsylvania. And Josh Shapiro would have brought Pennsylvania. You had, of course, John Fetterman, the, one of the senators, the junior senator, in dispute with the sitting governor, which is not a great factor. You know, at the end of the day, I think both of those candidates were terrific. But at the end of the day, Andrea, this was about how Kamala Harris felt about her partner and whether or not there was a working relationship there that she felt would really benefit the country. Uh, she knows the role of vice president. She knows what it entails. She knows what is necessary. She was in a great position to judge these two candidates over who would perform that job best and who was, frankly, m most qualified to be president of the United States. I mean, we're talking about a guy who, from public high school teacher to, tw to almost 25 years in the National Guard as a high-ranking non-commissioned officer, to a member of Congress, to a governor of a Midwestern state. Um, this is someone, This the resume of these two candidates are really quite something. And I, I don't think this was about rejecting Josh Shapiro as much as bringing somebody to the ticket who can plainly and clearly speak to most of America. This is not an elite guy. This is not an Ivy League guy. This is not somebody who's spent much time on the coast. This is somebody who knows more about cleaning the, the filter on his furnace uh, than, than J.D. Vance should, would ever hope to know. In fact, you know who this guy is? He's really who J.D. Vance is pretending to be. Uh, he is that salt of the earth, um, normal Midwestern guy that is going to communicate. And, and I agree with my friend Steve Israel. This guy is going to slice and dice the Trump Vance ticket with a smile on his face and a twinkle in his eye. Yeah, and it's, it's really striking Steve Israel, that, you know, he can be an attack dog without appearing as an attack dog. He's been described by J.D. Vance already today, I think, as a, you know, left-wing, West Coast wannabe, whatever West Coast wannabe means, but it's sort of San Francisco liberal or some one of those you know, pejorative terms that are attached to Californians. But there is about nothing about this guy that looks to me like California Yeah. in terms of anything, well, you know, generically you California. <laughs> Yeah, of course, J.D. Vance is going to say that. I mean, Tim Walz's view of West Coast is the West Coast of a lake, one of the lakes in Minnesota. 
you know, to, to define him as a progressive, as if that's a bad word, as if fighting for uh, health care is a bad word, protecting the Affordable Care Act is a bad word, standing up for reproductive freedoms uh, and battling climate, you know, as if those are bad values. Fact of the matter is that Tim Wall still established an ability to message and mobilize to communities that generally voted for Republicans because they understood for Tim Walz it was never about ideology, it was about them. And that is an indispensable attribute in politics today. <clears throat>